All right, here we go. We are starting our new chapter, chapter 10.1, talking about the properties of tangents. We're going to deal with some circles. We're going to have some polygons in this, but this is our new shape, the circle. Uh, right off the bat, what I would do if I were you is pause the video and take down all of these definitions. While there is no vocabulary test, one of the things I have noticed or I noticed about the struggles that you guys were having today on today's chapter 8 test is the fact that you did not memorize the properties of each of these shapes, and that was causing you some difficulties. So I highly encourage you, hint, hint, to memorize these definitions. So hit the pause button, memorize the definitions. I'm going to go through each one. Or memorize, uh, write down each definition. A circle, obviously, is a set of all points equidistant from a point. Okay, it's a set of all points equidistant from a point. The center is the point of a circle named by point P. Okay, that's the only point we know for sure. Okay. And it doesn't have to be point P every time. If you see here, this is an example. Okay. It's just any name of that point, and that's going to be circle P. Okay, so it names the circle. The radius is a segment with endpoints on the center and the circle. Okay, you guys know what a radius is. A chord, okay, here's where you're starting getting into some new stuff, is a segment also. So we got two keywords here. We've got segment, two types of segments. This one was a segment here, and here we go with another segment with endpoints on the circle. Notice the difference. Uh, the radius is an endpoint on the center of the circle and the circle. And a chord, our endpoints are both on the circle. Okay. A diameter is a chord through the center. It's the longest chord of the circle. Okay, you guys know what a diameter is, but now this is kind of a different variation of that definition for you. It's a chord that goes through the center. Okay. A secant, a line through the circle, and intersects the circle at two points. A line through the circle intersects the circle at two points. Okay, so this is a line that actually goes through the entire circle. Okay, we'll see more about that in a second. A tangent is a line that intersects the circle at one point. Secant, there's two. Tangent, there's one point. Okay. And then finally, the point of tangency is a point where the tangent intersects the circle. Okay, again, I would write these down. I know a lot of you want to print this out and highlight and all that other junk, but you will commit this quicker to memory if you write it down. Okay, even if you have bad handwriting, just the act of writing it down will help you memorize this more. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so here's a diagram that basically covers everything that we just talked about. Okay, so we're going to go through, we're going to highlight some of these. All right, the first one, let's talk about a chord. Okay. So we see, actually, let's just go in order from our definition. So the first one is a circle. Obviously, you see the circle there. That's not too terribly challenging, okay? Then we're going to look at the center, okay? The center of our circle, there's one right here. And there's one right here. This one doesn't actually have a name. That little one doesn't have a name. So you'd call this circle A because of that point or that center, Okay? Let's look at the radius now. Okay, we have four possible radii. Okay, radii is the uh, plural for radius. There's four possible. AD is a radius. AE is a radius. AB is a radius. And of course, AF is a radius. Skipping ahead to diameter for just a second, you're going to notice that on your diameter, AE and AF, if you add those together using the segment addition postulate, you're going to have the diameter, FE. So FE is your diameter. Okay? Let's look at a chord. Okay, we have two chords. Okay, we have one here, HG. Okay, we have FM is a chord. And then, of course, the diameter 
could be your third chord because the diameter is a chord as well. Okay. All right, we've already talked about diameter, so let's go ahead and talk about the secant. We have one secant for this particular circle here, and this one secant is a, is a line that goes through, two points go through the circle. That's that one right there. So you can see that that's a point here, point M and point F, go through the circle. Okay, that's two points on the circle. Okay, after secant, we're going to look at the tangent, and the tangent is right here. The tangent only touch, touches one point on the circle, and that happens to be the point of tangency, which is right there. That's B, point B. So then you have your tangent and then your point of tangency, okay? So that covers all of our vocabulary with the picture. So if you don't, if you don't have the printed out notes, I would definitely write this down or draw this again so you have this. This might be a good unit to make flashcards where you have the definition and a picture. All right, let's continue on. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to talk about are common tangents. Common tangents are tangents that share more than one circle. So tangents that share more than one circle. Okay, you might want to get that down. If you need to pause the video, go ahead. <clears throat> All right, we have two types of, of common tangents. We got a common interior tangent. You'll notice that our, on our common interior tangent, you will see the circles, the tangents essentially, intersect, and they're in between the two circles. Okay, so the, each tangent goes in between the two circles. That would be an interior, common interior tangent. The exterior tangent, as you can see, both lie outside of the two circles. Okay, so common interior tangents and common exterior tangents. All right, so let's put this into play. Radius to a tangent is always a right angle, okay? So the radius to a tangent is always a right angle, okay? Something else that you need to memorize. Again, I might highlight that if I were you. Write that down. So what exactly does that mean? Well, here's my radius right here, AB, and that's going to connect the tangent. Here's another radius, AC, and that's going to be touching a tangent, right? Because here's my tangent, line CD, and here's my other tangent, Line BD, okay? So whenever I take a radius to a tangent, it creates a 90 degree angle, like so. So hopefully you clearly start to see now two right triangles. There's one. And there's the other. Okay, looking at those two triangles, what does that allow us to do? Okay, that allows us to determine that triangle ADC and triangle ADB are congruent. Tell me why they're congruent. Well, you know that AC is congruent to AB because they're both radius, right? And all radius are congruent. And then you know that AD is congruent to AD, right? Because of the reflexive property, and they share that. What ha okay, so now you have two congruent sides. How can I prove that these triangles are congruent? Okay, hopefully you're not saying side angle side, because side angle side would mean that you know that these angles are congruent, and we just don't know that right now. But if you remember, we can use hypotenuse leg because the hypotenuse and the leg are congruent. 
So hypotenuse here and this leg and this leg are congruent. And so that's why we can use hypotenuse leg to determine that these two triangles are congruent. Since these two triangles are congruent, that means CD is congruent to BD. And that's where this little note down here comes in. Two tangents to a point are always congruent. And we can say that because of CPCTC now, right? Because once we prove two triangles to be congruent, if you remember back to that review, then we can now prove that all their parts are congruent. And then, of course, knowing that information will allow us to actually find a whole lot of other information, as you will see in this chapter. And that's pretty much the introduction to our uh, 10.1 unit, or our chapter 10 unit. If you have any questions, write them down. Come see me in the morning for tutoring, or see me after school. Other than that, uh, be ready to come in tomorrow, ready to do 10.1 classwork. Uh, that's it. Have a great night.